Welcome back from the break. It is Sunday, June 5th, 2022 on the Gregorian calendar and then the Hebrew calendar. It is Sivan 6, 5782. This is Shavuot, Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks. We welcome everyone who's with us here today and those who will listen in later on the archives. We pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, in this segment, this is the second portion of the services today. In this segment, we are going to read through the Brit Kadasha portion of today, today's service, and then do the altar call and Holy Communion, and then close out today's service. Very interesting to know, um, to, to look at the kinsman redeemer role uh, when we read the book of Ruth and we see the importance of that and we see how it parallels to Yeshua and how Yeshua is our kinsman redeemer and he has redeemed us. He has bought us with a price. He bought us with his life. He paid for us with his very life and we could not have done it ourselves. So um, very very interesting contrast. We're going to open this with our opening prayer, this segment, and continue on. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your appointed Moedim. We thank, thank you that we are here together in your presence. We ask your Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, as this appointed Moedim is about the Holy Spirit that you have sent to be with us on the day of Pentecost, on the day of Shavuot, on the 50th day, when we have counted the Omer to lead us to this day, you sent the Holy Spirit, the Comforter that was promised by Yeshua to the disciples. And the Holy Spirit gave them the, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues. Praise God. We thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit for being here with us all this time since since that since the inception of of that day when you came and descended you have remained with us we're grateful for that we're grateful for the very fact that Yeshua said he would not leave us without anyone that he would send the comforter he had to ascend he had to go to the father he had to go so he could prepare a place for us being our kinsman redeemer, but he would send another, the comforter, that we would not be alone. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for remaining with us, for guiding us, for teaching us, directing us, for those that are willing to take your direction. You're awesome. You're a mighty awesome teacher, and we love being in your presence, and we're so blessed by your presence as well. We thank you. We thank you, Father God. We worship and adore you. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you all the praise. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Amen and Amen. And I just want to say the Shehekienu, if we can say that together. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Shehekienu Vekimanu Vehegianu Lazman Hazei. Blessed are you, Lord. Our God, King of the universe, who has granted us life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this occasion, this appointed Moedim of Shavuot. And in the ancient days, the, the high priest sounded the shofar to call to worship. And we are going to also sound the shofar at this time. <laughs> I'm going to pause it now for you to go ahead and listen to some praise and worship songs. Again, I do not upload them with this recording, but I do post uh, songs to the four social media platforms of MeWe, Gab, USA.life, and, and uh, Facebook. 
So um, you can certainly click on to them from there and go to the actual artist page. You can support the artist. These are anointed songs. Um, or if you have your own praise and worship songs, so go ahead and listen to them at this time. Praise and worship is, is extremely important. And we are born, we were born to praise and worship our Heavenly Father. So absolutely, it is one of the most important elements of any service. So I'm going to pause now to do that. And then we will come back with the Brit Kadasha readings for this service. And we're going to start in the Gospel of John, um, chapter 4, verses 1 to 42. So that is the entire, well, not, well, not quite the entire um, chapter, but pretty, pretty much the chapter except for uh, one segment. So Yeshua offers living water. Now Yeshua knew that the Pharisees heard that he was making and immersing more disciples than John. Although Yeshua himself was not immersing, his, his disciples were. So he left Judea and went back again to the Galilee, but he needed to pass through Samaria. So he comes to a Samaritan town called Shechem, near the plot of the land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, so Yeshua, exhausted from the journey, was sitting by the well. It was midday. A, a Samaritan woman comes to draw water. Give me a drink, Yeshua tells her, for his disciples had gone away to the town to buy food. Then the Samaritan woman tells him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Jewish people don't deal with Samaritans. Yeshua replied to, to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is you were saying, who is who it is saying to you, give me a drink. You would have asked him, and he would have given you living living water, sir. The woman tells him, you don't have a bucket, and the well is deep. Then from where do you get this living water? You are not greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave us this well. He drank out of it himself with his sons and his cattle. Yeshua replied to her, everyone who drinks from this water will get thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never be thirsty. The water that I give him will become a fountain of water within him, within him springing up to eternal life. Sir, the woman tells him, give me this water so I won't get thirsty or have to come all the way here to draw water. He tells her, go call your husband and then come back here. I don't have a husband, the woman replied. Yeshua tells her, you said it right. I have no husband. For you've had five husbands, and the man you have now isn't your husband. This you've spoken truthfully. Sir, the woman tells him, I see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you all say that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Yeshua tells her, woman, believe me, an hour is coming when you will worship the father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We, we worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming. It is here now when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people as his worshipers. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman tells him, I know that Messiah is coming. He who is called the anointed one, when he comes, he will explain everything to us. Yeshua tells her, I, the one speaking to you, I am. Ready for harvest. At this, at this moment, the disciples came back. They were amazed that he was speaking with a woman, yet no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went back to the town. She tells the people, come see a man who tell, told me everything I ever did. He couldn't be the Messiah, could he? The people left the town and began coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were pressing him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. So the disciples were saying to each other, no one brought him food to eat, did they? Yeshua tells them, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to accomplish his work. Don't you say four more months and then come, comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields. 
they are white and ready for harvest. The reaper receives a reward and gathers fruit for eternal life so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For the saying is true. One sows and another reaps. I send you to reap what you haven't worked for. Others have worked hard and you have joined in their work. Many of the Samaritans from the town put their trust in him because the word of the woman testifying. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they kept asking him to stay with them. He stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They kept telling the woman, it's no longer because of your words that we believe. We've heard for ourselves. Now we know that this really is the Savior of the world. So that is... Uh, no, that, that those are more Gentiles actually that were, were actually accepting Yeshua. Now we have Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 47. The Ruach fills the disciples. When the day of Shavuot had come, they were all together in one place. Suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. Now remember when we read Ezekiel. He heard that in, in, in those four those four beings. Their wings sounded like rushing winds. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And tongues like fire spreading out appeared to them and settled on each one of them. They were all filled with the Ruach HaKadosh and began to speak in other tongues as the Ruach enabled them to speak out. Now, Jewish people were staying in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. Remember, this is Shavuot is a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. So they would be coming from all over the place, all the, you know, Jewish men from all over. And when this sound came, the crowd gathered. They were bewildered because each was hearing them speaking in, in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, all these who are speaking, aren't they Galileans? How is it that we each hear our own birth language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and those living in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Beriga and Pamph Pamph Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, towards Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jewish people and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring in our own tongues the mighty deeds of God. And they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to each other, what does this mean? Others poking fun said, they are full of sweet new wine. Peter speaks to the Shavuot crowd. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Judeans and all who are staying in Jerusalem, let it let this be known to you and pay attention to my words. These men are not drunk. So as you suppose, for it's only the third hour of the day, but this is what was spoken about through the prophet Joel. And it shall be in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my Ruach on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on, on my slaves, male and female, I will pour out my Ruach in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I will give wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and smoky vapor. The sun shall turn to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and glorious day of Adonai comes. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of Adonai shall be saved. Men of Israel hear these words. Yeshua, Hamashiach, a man, Yeshua Hanatzerati, it says, from, from, from Yeshua the Nazareth, uh, a man authenticated to you by God with mighty deeds and wonders and signs God performed through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Yeshua, given over by God's predetermined plan and foreknowledge, nailed to the cross by the hand of lawless men you, you killed. But God raised him up, 
releasing him from the pains of death, since it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says about him, I saw Adonai always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I might not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my, my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my body also will live in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to Sheol, or let your Holy One see decay. There was no decay in Yeshua's body ever. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can confidently tell you that the patriarch David died and was buried. His tomb is with us to this day. So because he was a prophet and knew God had sworn with an oath to him to seat one of his descendants on the throne, David saw beforehand and spoke of Messiah's resurrection that he will not that, that he was not abandoned to Sheol and his body did not see decay. This Yeshua God raised up and all are witnesses. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and receiving from the Father the promise of the Ruach HaKadosh, he poured out this, what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, yet he himself says, Adonai said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool stool for your feet. Therefore, let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him this Yeshua, whom you had crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Teshuvah, thousands immersed. And when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the emissaries, Hello, brethren, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent and let each of you be immersed in the name of Messiah Yeshua for the removal of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh. For the promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far away, as many as Adonai, our God, calls to himself. With many other words, he warned them and kept urging them and saying, Save yourself from this twisted generation. So those who received his message were immersed, and that day about 3,000 souls were added. The new covenant community begins. They were devoting themselves to the teaching of the emissaries and to the fellowship, to breaking bread and to prayers. Fear lay upon every soul and many wonders and signs were happening through the emissaries and all who believed were together having everything in common. They began selling their property and possessions and sharing them with all as any had need. Day by day, they continued with one mind, spending time at the temple and breaking bread from house to house. They were sharing meal with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And every day the Lord was adding to their number those being saved. And next we have 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 31. Spiritual gifts for the body. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed by idols that cannot speak and got led astray. Therefore, I make known to you that no one, no one speaking by the Ruach Elohim says Yeshua be cursed. And no one can say Yeshua is Lord except by the Ruach HaKadosh. Now there are various kinds of gifts, but the same Ruach. And Ruach is spirit. There are various kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are various kinds of work, but the same God who works all things and all people. But to each person is given the manifestation of the Ruach for the benefit of all. For to one is given throughout the Ruach a word of wisdom, to another a word of knowledge, according to the same Ruach, to another faith by the same Ruach, to another gift of healings by the one Ruach, to another workings of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Ruach activates all these things, distributing to each person individually as he wills. For just as the body is one and has many parts in all the parts of the body, Though many are one body, so also is Messiah, for in one Ruach we're all immersed into one body, whether Jewish or Greek, or 
in other words, Jew or Gentile, slave or free, and all were made to drink of one ruach, for the body is not one part, but many. If the foot says, since I'm not a hand, I'm not part of the body, it is therefore not part of the body. And if the ear says, since I'm not an eye, I'm not part of the body, is it for this reason any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the parts, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But now there are many parts, yet one body. And that body, uh, when, when we talk about, we're talking about the spiritual body, needs to work together just as the physical body uh, needs to fully function together as one body. So does the spiritual body, the body of Messiah. The eye cannot tell the hand, I don't need you, or then turn the, the head to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be less important are indispensable. Those parts of the body that we think to be less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, but our presentable parts have no such need. Rather, God assembled the, the body, giving more honor to those who are lacking, so that there may be no division in the body, but so that the parts may have the same care for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer together. If one part is honored, all the parts rejoice together. Now, you are the body of Messiah and members individually. God has put into his community first emissaries, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles and healings, helps, leadership, various kinds of tongues. All are not emissaries, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All do not work miracles, do they? All uh, do not have gifts of healing, do they? All not speak in tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? But earnestly desire the greater gifts. And still I show you a far better way. And then, in conclusion, we have one, uh, one more set of verses, and that's Galatians chapter 5 verses 13 to 26. Brothers, walking by the Ruach, brothers and sisters, you were called to freedom. Only do not let your freedom become an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole Torah can be summed up in a single saying, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not destroyed by one another. But I say walk by the Ruach, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh, for the flesh sets its desire against the Ruach, but the Ruach sets its desire against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you cannot do what you want. But if you are led by the Ruach, if you're led by the Holy Spirit, you are not under law. Now the deeds of the flesh are clear, sexual immorality impurity, indecency, idolatry, witchcraft, hostility, strife, jealous, jealousy, rage, selfish, ambition, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I'm warning you, just as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit, it, inherit God's kingdom. But the fruit of the Ruach is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now those who belong to Messiah have crucified the flesh with its passion, passions and desires. If we live by the Ruach, let us also walk by the Ruach. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. And that is the end of our scripture readings. Father God, we thank you. We thank you once again for all that you have done by sending your son your one and only son who died for us but it didn't end there he died he he defeated death hell and the grave he defeated the evil one and then he ascended to you and he sent the holy spirit to us to to be with us until he can return again 
There was so much that happened and we thank you so much. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for all that you do. We give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we give you all of our praise in the, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. And we've been talking about Yeshua and all that he has done, and yes, salvation can only be achieved through Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences, and our Lord took all of our sins with him to the cross, everything. And this is so the world could be redeemed of sin forever and reconciled to the Father. There, there had to be redemption. There, it could not be any other way. Before Yeshua came, uh, there was a sacrificial system that was in place that God allowed uh, blemish-free, uh, perfect animals to be sacrificed. And most of them were little, little lambs that were sacrificed for the sins of the people. When Yeshua did it, he did it once and for all. Okay. He also took a beating from the Roman soldiers, and, and one of those stripes was for our healing and affliction. So, yes, we could say by his wounds, we are healed. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 said, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. He died for all of the sins, past, present, and future, after he had ascended, and uh, for centuries, the, the sins of centuries up until the present time and beyond. That was a lot to heap on to him. But he loved us that much that he, he came here to do that. For God so loved the world that he, he, he sent his only begotten son, but whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him, the world should be, you know, should be saved, could be saved um, if they accept him. It is a choice that you make. It is a free will choice. God does not force himself on you. Um, so this is a choice that you will make to accept Yeshua as your Lord and Savior or not. There are consequences and, you know, he, he is the way, the truth, and the life. You will not get to heaven by your own means. And he also told Nicodemus when he was alive, um, that one must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. And he said on another occasion, you must be like a child to get into the kingdom of heaven. So you're born again of the spirit, of his spirit. You're born anew. Flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. That is where the corruption began in the Garden of Eden. Jesus, Yeshua, reversed the curse. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you are ready to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, and become a member of the family of God, and know that you know that you know that you're not going to be left behind, you will go to heaven. Um, you can say this prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I am a sinner. I'm asking for forgiveness. I'm asking to change my ways completely. I understand I need a Savior, and I know that Savior is Yeshua. I believe, I believe with all my heart, Yeshua died on a cross, was buried, and, and was risen again. And I believe he's coming again to rule and reign as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Thank you. Yeshua, for paying my sin debt in full. I am forever grateful for you for that. And I accept your gift of salvation and eternal life. And I thank you for forgiving me for, for all my sins and, and allowing me to start anew. I'm asking you to send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all your ways for the rest of my life. I believe you are the Messiah. I believe you are the Savior. I also believe you're the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. 
Thank you. And I believe also through you and you alone that I am saved. I am healed. I am delivered and set free, born again, and set free from sin and their consequences and healthy of mind, body, and soul because of you, Yeshua. In Jesus, Yeshua's precious, mighty, powerful name, amen and amen. And if you said this prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or Messianic congregation, one that reads from the Bible and not pulls in doctrines of men off the street. We, we, we cannot be mixing and mingling. I'm going to encourage you to also get a copy of the Bible so that you can read and you can discern what is truth and and that what you're being preached to either on Saturday or Sunday is full, fully doctrinal. It is fully sound and it is it, it lines up with the Bible. I'm going to encourage you to get into a Bible study and also um, to develop a, a prayer life and, and, and start talking to your Heavenly Father. You are now born into the family of God. You have a huge family all over the world. And your estate is now, you know, the kingdom of God. We are passing through this world. We are in this world, but not of it. We're now a new creation in, in Yeshua, in Jesus Christ. Know who you know. know. Know who you are in him. You have been made righteous through, only through him, not through anything that you could have done. And we're all equal in that aspect. So I'm going to open this up um, now to our Holy Communion time. And Yeshua instituted um, Holy Communion on the eve of Passover. That was the night before he, he was betrayed, on the night that he was betrayed, actually, um, early in, the, uh, in an upper room with his disciples. And he asks us to do this in remembrance of him, and this is exactly what we're doing. But we need to come to the table of the Lord. Um, it, was, it was not a small price that Yeshua gave. It was everything, his life. So we need to take this seriously. So there is a preparation. We need to have our heart right um, before we partake of the Lord's Supper in remembrance of what he did for us and how important this is. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let one examine themselves, so let them eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For, for one who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner and will drink judgment, eat and drink judgment to themselves, not discerning the Lord's body. Paul addressed a church and explain there are two ways that you can come to the table of the Lord. The first one is the way we want to come. Those who examine themselves before taking the supper. The ones who examine themselves before they partake of the supper are the ones who are taking it in a worthy manner. For what are they examining themselves for? For sin. For sin keeps us from a right relationship with the Lord. When we examine ourselves, we are to confess that God has promised to forgive us and restore us to proper fellowship with him. Again, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The second type of person that could be coming to the table are the ones who are not taking it seriously. And they're not taking sin seriously that may be plaguing their lives. They might be people who say they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, um, but are living in an uncommitted life to him and there there are some times we call them saturday believers sunday believers and the world that watches their comings and goings call them calls them hypocrites because they're not giving an example of of being committed to the lord this group is known to the pastor as individuals who sit soaked and sour in the pews. They're usually the ones who find fault in everything in the church, and they usually don't involve themselves in daily Bible reading. And there are many things that separate them from God. And this type of person needs to reflect. They need to repent before taking the Lord's Supper because the Lord will not tolerate this. 
there are consequences. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the rest with the world. So many become weak and sickly in this type of judgment is called chastening those individuals who have accepted Christ as their Savior, Yeshua as their Savior, but are not living for the Lord will be judged by the Lord. If any of you is living a life of sin but is not being chastened or disciplined, you need to check yourself to see if you are truly saved. And it is so important before you involve yourself in the remembrance of Yeshua's sacrifice, repent, be restored and renewed. Many die and the judgment is indeed terminal. The Bible uses the term sleep when it talks about a believer's death. Some people die maturely because of sin in their lives. We need to cut it at its root, sin at its root, and don't let it get full grown because, because it will bring forth death. So the Corinthian church had some real problems, and Paul was addressing them, and, and our the church today has many of the same problems. There's nothing new under the sun, as uh, Solomon said, and history does seem to re unfortunately repeat itself in, in some ways. There are believers who come to the Lord's table without examining their lives, and they are challenging God's word. They will lose. God is going to deal with all of this, and if you are here today and have not been examining your life for sin, I would challenge you today to examine your relationship with the Lord. Are you in fellowship with him? Are you keeping short accounts with him? If there is sin in your life, are you willing to confess it, turn from it, and follow the Lord more, more closely? Only you can make that decision. The Lord's Supper can be an experience of worship and worthiness, a time of repentance and remembrance. Or it can be a time of disobedience, which will result in God's ultimate discipline. So let's spend some time in prayer and self-examination before we partake in the Lord's Supper. Now, when I pause for you to get the elements, um, I'm going to ask that each of you pray before the Lord individually and, and confess any sin, known or un unknown. And so that when you come back with the with the elements that you're coming back with a clean heart and ready to receive. So we're going to discuss the elements of communion. And the, this was introduced by Yeshua. Um, and he asked us to do communion in remembrance of him. So we're remembering. What are we remembering? The sacrifice that he has made for us with his body and his blood, his life. He gave his life. So the bread was to is to represent the body of Yeshua that died on the cross for our sins. It is a representation. It, this is a symbol and how we're remembering because he asked us to do it in this manner. Yeshua suffered many abuses on his way to the cross and his body was in rough shape on the cross. He gave us all for us. He suffered so much on the cross for us. Now, if you don't have matzah, that's okay. You can, you know, the Lord knows your heart. And yes, it's a symbol. Um, so if all you have is a cracker or even a, even a piece of bread, that is okay. The cup. And this is what we're representing. Um, Yeshua, the, the blood of Yeshua that he shed on the cross for our sins. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And Yeshua had to shed his blood for us. The animal sacrifices of the Old Testament looked ahead to when Yeshua would be on that cross and would be shedding his blood for the sins of the world. This sacrifice was the final one needed to save the world. His blood was enough. For all those who accept him as their personal savior, Paul tells us that celebrating with these elements reminds the church of Yeshua's sacrifice. And so often we complain about things and um, about small sacrifices, and we need to remember what Yeshua did for us. That was no small thing, and that was pure love. Amen. Amen. Now, also, I want to read Psalm 51 for you. <clears throat> when you're praying, 
you need to think about Psalm 51 uh, because David did it so, so contritely and so with, with, with so much emotion. He loved God with all his heart. But there was a dark time in David's life that he sinned against God. He committed adultery um, with Bathsheba. She was married to one of his loyal soldiers. And um, not only did he commit adultery, now he did, she did get pregnant. Uh, and he tried to cover that pregnancy up. And when he couldn't cover it up, then he made sure that Bathsheba's husband, Uriah the Hittite, would, would be set into the front lines where he would be killed in battle. So he could then marry Bathsheba and, and uh, everybody would, would think that, uh, you know, he, there, were, there was no unfaithfulness, but he did commit adultery and God knew it. And he sent Nathan the prophet to confront him. And when he was confronted, he was, he was brokenhearted. Um, and he knew that, you know, yes, he could, he could give any kind of offering, but the Lord was not willing to accept those offerings. He wanted, he wanted David to ask for forgiveness, to be contrite, to really, to really mean what he was asking uh, to create in him a clean heart and renew a right spirit, that he would not go out and do this again. And so this is an example of, of someone who was in, had always been in right standing with God who totally slipped and really needed to repent. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, to the choir master of Psalm of David when Nathan the prophet went, went to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. Have mercy on me, God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgression and my sin is ever before me against you only. Have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight? So that you may be justified in, in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with this that I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear the joy and gladness. Let me, let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. O God of my salvation, my tongue will say aloud, of, sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and put my mouth, with, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you will not delight sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with the burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then will then will you delight in right sacrifices and burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. So I'm going to pause it now for you to go ahead and, and gather the elements for communion and also to, to pray to the Lord um, your individual prayer for forgiveness and um, to make sure that your heart is right as we, we uh, are moving into taking communion. So I'm going to pause it now. Okay. Will you bow your heads in prayer with me now as we are, are here to take communion? Father, we come to this table. We, we come as your guests and we rest only in the worthiness of your son we're not here because of anything that we have done we are here because of what Yeshua has done and as we look upon the emblems of our Savior's death may we remember exactly why he died 
because of each and every one of us. To cleanse and to heal, to satisfy your righteousness and justice. We remember his eternal love and boundless grace. May we receive the assurance of forgiveness, eternal life, and the hope of glory. As the bread and cup nourish our body, so may your indwelling Holy Spirit strengthen our soul until the day of Yeshua's appearing when we will hunger and thirst no more and sit with him at his heavenly table. Thank you, Yeshua, for all that you have done to redeem us. You gave everything, including your very life, and we thank you for this and are very grateful. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. Say with me now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Take that piece of bread or cracker or matzah. The Lord Jesus, Yeshua, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And remember the bread is a symbol. We're doing this in remembrance of him. The, to remember the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, which was given for us. Take and eat. Now take the cup in your hand as well. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Again, this is a symbol of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, through which we have the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you so much. You sent your only son into this world to die a horrific death, and it was from, it, it, it was from love that he gave his life. He loved each and every one of us, past, present, and future. And so do you, Father God. You love your creation, and you, you would, you would, your wish is for that no one perishes, that everyone comes to redemption and accepts Yeshua as Lord and Savior. Father God, you're an amazing, you're an awesome God, and we love you, we worship you. And we adore you in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, whom we owe everything to. Our life belongs to you, Yeshua. You saved us. You redeemed us. You bought us with a price, and that was your life. And we belong to you, Yeshua. We love you. We thank you. And you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords forever and always. Amen. In your mighty name, in Jesus, Yeshua's mighty name, amen. May you walk in the light as he is in the light, and may you have fellowship with one another. For the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and the love of God and the communion of the Ruach HaKadosh be with you all. Amen. Shavuot, to remember, um, remember the Torah was given at Mount Sinai. We remember this story of Ruth and our kinsman redeemer, and we remember Yeshua who is our kinsman redeemer, who gave his very life for us. And then, not only that, he didn't stop there. He made a promise, and that promise was fulfilled on Shabbat when the Ruach HaKadosh descended on the disciples. It is still with us today. How wonderful. 
how wonderful that we, God's creation, get to experience all three persons of the Godhead. Father God, Yeshua, and the Ruach HaKadosh. Amen. Amen. The Aaronic blessing or the priestly blessing, we're going to find that, that in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons. He gave specific words to bless the children of Israel, and he wanted his name placed on them. And we'll say the blessing in Hebrew and also English. I just want to mention um, if you said that prayer earlier um, and became a member of the family of God, you are part of this blessing. And anyone who has been saved and born again before, you are a member of the family of God. This blessing is for you because once you are saved and born again, Adonai puts his name on you and seals you with his Holy Spirit. You are his. And he loves to bless his children. So in Hebrew, it goes like this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Amen and amen. And it is the beginning of the week, uh, the very first day of the week. So I am going to say once again, Shavua Tov. Have a good week. God bless each and every one of you. We will have the Bible study this week. Just as a reminder, what, what else is coming up this week? Uh, we meet live in real time Tuesday evening, 7 p.m. on our free conference call.com channel. Please come join us. We would love to have you. And also we will have the Bible study. We're going to be finishing the book of Judges this week. God bless each and every one of you.